The biologist D.O. Wilson described insects as little things that run the world, and that's because they're important for a whole range of different ecosystem processes and functions, everything that goes on in an ecosystem. But I think he could have been more general. I think he'd have applied that to all invertebrates, including this fantastic centipede behind us. If you look under leaf litter, if you look in the compost heap in your garden, it's going to be crawling with life. And a lot of it's this smaller stuff. It includes things which are predators, things which are herbivores, things which are pollinators, things which are important for decomposition. All of these different processes go through insects and other invertebrates. So I think they're important because they illustrate the sheer diversity of life that shares the planet with us, not just in terms of number of species, but also in terms of what those species do. Ladybirds. In late autumn or early winter, as the temperature begins to drop, it's quite common to find groups of ladybirds huddled together. At this time of the year, their food sources such as aphids are dwindling and freezing temperatures pose a threat to them. So adult ladybirds seek out warm, sheltered locations to hunker down and see out the coldest part of the year. The red fox can be found all across the Northern Hemisphere, in North America, parts of North Africa, Europe and Asia. They are highly adaptable and have found ways to live near human settlements, feeding on scraps and leftovers. As such, if you want to see a fox, you're more likely to see one in a town or city than in the countryside where they're more reclusive. They're described as crepuscular and nocturnal, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. But that doesn't mean you can't see one in the daytime. And even if you can't see one, you can still hear one. Male foxes, called dogs, make a loud barking noise, but female foxes, called vixens, make an eerie screeching cry, kind of like a banshee. 